Hi, I'm Anthony and this is Bob Barker. And today we're gonna to show you how to make this drill charging and storage station. So let's get to it. So to start off with, I'm just measuring the area where I'm gonna put the drill station and just go ahead and ignore that mess I had over off to the side. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and uh, chop down some wood down to size. Now I'm gonna use the three quarter inch Baltic birch because I had a fair amount left over after my uh, workbench project. And since I had it, might as well use it. And it gets a little awkward cutting down some of these pieces um, which I really need to make a good guide for uh, my circular saw, which I will be doing pretty soon, which will make it less awkward for these cuts. And now that we got the right depth, we can break out the sled and we can go ahead and chop all these down uh, to the right size. And we're using this to cut off the side pieces um, as well as the top and the shelves that are going to go in it. And when I initially was making this, I was actually going to make some some dados for the shelves and some rabbits to join everything but then I figured you know this is really a very simple project and I wanted to make it as DIY friendly as possible um, so I went a little bit more simple with it and we're going to actually be doing more pocket holes for most of the the joinery on this uh, particular project but as you can see the the table saw sled is really coming in handy because it makes it so much nicer to do all these cuts here now you can get away with just doing it with a circular saw. Um, it's just going to take more time than it would with this and it's not quite as precise but you can definitely still get the job done. And same goes even for ripping down these pieces to size. Like you don't have to have a table saw for this. You can do it all with your circular saw. Uh, but I do have these tools so I can go ahead and just use them. And here I'm just setting up a stop that way. I can just repeat the cuts uh, and this is more for the parts that's going to hang down and hold the drills themselves. I must say I am really glad that I made this uh, sled because it makes this so much easier. And if you are interested in the sled I do have a video and plans for it so go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link to it that way it's easy for you to find. And of course the supervisor is always somewhere around. I didn't even know he was there, but he's right there making sure I'm doing a good job. Once he's satisfied that I'm doing okay, he walked off and he'll come back and check on me later. And here we're ripping down the edge pieces uh, for the parts that's gonna hold the drills. And you'll see why that part needs to be a little bit more narrow than the others once we start assembling it a little bit later. And with that all cut up, it's time to move on to the pocket holes and there were a lot of pocket holes. Uh, so what I did for this one is I just pre-marked every piece exactly where that I wanted the holes and how it was going to go together on the layout and then I just go ahead and, and did them all at once. Um, that way I didn't have to keep on breaking all of this stuff out and doing it over and over with each step. So now that we got all those drilled out, it's time to start assembling. And here, this is a part of a, a shelf divider that I'm making. And just because it's kind of deep, it would be hard to put these two T pieces together inside. So I'm just using the pocket holes to put those two there. And now moving on to this part. Uh, now this is the back piece there. And I'm gonna, everything that I'm making here, I'm gluing it and then uh, using the pocket holes to join them. Um, I don't always show gluing, but that's, it's been done on pretty much every piece that I put together. And putting the sides up to the back would be a lot easier if I had those 90 degrees positioning squares, but I don't have those yet. So I will make do, although it gets a little awkward sometimes. So my plan for this part wasn't the best because um, my pocket holes are coming in from the back so you can't see them so I was kind of clamping it together. So as you can see my clamps weren't put in on the right position and then as I moved it up it all just kind of falls apart on me. So after a few cursor words I regrouped and I clamped it back together in a much better position that way once it's actually clamped in place I can just do the pocket hole screws and then it won't move. And you'll notice that the back piece isn't quite as long as the side pieces. That's actually not by design. It just happened to be the size of the pieces that I had. And since that 
uh, part that's short is going to be where the drills are hanging. You're never really going to notice it, so I didn't think it was big a deal enough to buy another piece. So with that done, we can move on to installing the lower shelf. Now to get that nice and even exactly where we want on both sides, I'm using uh, some of the pieces that we're going to use to as the spacers to get to hold the drills we're using that as the spacers to set the shelf so i put one of these on each side and then we just butt the shelves up against it and then i know it's going to be exactly in the same place on both sides that way i don't have to fuss with measuring and trying to hold it in place so i just uh, get those in place and then i can clamp the shelf to those pieces so i know it's not going to move as i'm doing the pocket holes because when you do the pocket holes Oftentimes the pieces of wood does tend to move just a little bit. It just likes to slide some so the clamps will keep that from happening. And with that secured then we can go ahead and just remove all the clamps and the spacers and then we're going to be doing the exact same thing for the next shelf. Um, although I'm just going to use my divider as the spacer on one side and I cut down another spacer uh, to the exact same size for the other side. And I was able to clamp it and screw it in place. Now, honestly, you could leave it just open shelves like that, um, but I just kind of wanted that little extra divider because that's where I'm gonna put some of my uh, drill bits. So then I put in some pocket holes from the front here, and then I'll have to do a couple other uh, screws from the side later just because of the how deep it was. I couldn't get them all quite in right in place there. For the top piece, since you're never gonna see up there, I just went ahead and screwed it uh, straight in from the top. And then you can see that part is, has a little bit of a lip, but later on I'm going to go ahead and trim that uh, down with my router using a flush trim bit. And of course as I'm working, the supervisor is never too far away. He will sneak up on you no matter what you're doing right about now. And he decided he needed some attention. So we go ahead and put him up on the table. That way he can in inspect the work and make sure everything is up to his standards. Turns out he really just wanted to hire a vantage point to be able to watch out for cats in the street there. So I got back to work around him. And right here we're setting up some lines that way we can screw into the back of those shelves. So I'm just marking out where it is and drawing a line. Um, that way once I drill and screw it, I'm not gonna miss and then those uh, screws aren't gonna be visible at all from the front. And apparently my drilling was messing up his concentration. He didn't like it when I got a little bit too close with him. And I was making sure to pre-drill all of these ones because it is going straight into the plywood and I didn't want to split it um, with these screws. So now that we got those in, those aren't going anywhere. We can go ahead and turn around and we can see that it's starting to look like a cabinet. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, because this little divider just wasn't really set up well to get the pocket holes, um, I just put these uh, screws in there to keep it in place. And then I'll go ahead later on and fill that uh, with some wood filler and then you won't really be able to see where those screws were. And then there we just did the flush trim bit uh, to get that nice and, and straight. And now here we're setting up all these little dividers um, that's going to be the spaces, different slots for all of my drills. and uh, later some of my com compressor guns as well um, So we just went ahead and measure out where each one of these is supposed to sit and then we can use my clamps to hold them in place when we do the pocket uh, pocket hole screws And I set this one up for five different slots now. I do only have two uh, drill Right now, but I do have some other uh, Nailers that I can put in there and of course there's also room for any tools that I get in the future before I screw them into place, I double check the spacing and then also go through each one of these pieces and make sure that all of them are nice and square. And the pocket holes here will be slightly visible, but I chose an orientation that goes towards a wall. That way it's going to be as hidden as it possibly can be. And while I was taking these off, I noticed that somehow I, my little divider there wasn't quite right. so readjusted it and put some th screws in through the side and I'll fill those in with uh, some wood filler later. So now these are the flat pieces that are going to on the bottom of those dividers and that's going to be the pieces that actually hold the drills. And so I'm just putting a little bit of a round over there on, e uh, on the inside of each one of those. That way the drills will kind of slide nice and smooth on there and you won't have any rough edges.
And here you can see why those pieces had to be a little bit smaller on the outside because they don't overhang over two sides of the wood uh, like the middle pieces do. And over here, I started double and triple checking it, and I noticed that this part is just a little off. So I wasn't sure what was going on, so I decided, okay, I'm just gonna do the other side for now, and then I'll circle back to this and fix it in a minute. Turns out I somehow cut one of those pieces uh, uneven, so it was creating a wedge so it wouldn't fit in. So I had to smack off the edge piece and then chisel off the glue that was already starting to set. And then after that, I ripped down a new one and this time the fit was perfect and I was able to get it back into place. Then I went back and made sure each one of these had three screws each so they'll never budge. So now that we have it all together, it's time to go ahead and put it up. So I marked out where the studs are and I'm just gonna be drilling that straight into the studs. So I pre-drilled and set a uh, four screws into this and the wife was kind enough to come out and help out. So she put up the leveler there to make sure it's nice and level and she started both of those screws for me. That way I can go ahead and finish it up afterwards. So once uh, it was easier to hold, we did that and I kind of had to readjust that one and she was washing the level uh, good for me there and then we got it nice and in place. And I was so anxious to do that while she was there to help, I kind of forgot to put the hole here. So I used that two by four as a backer piece to prevent blowout and then I drilled out the hole, which is gonna be where the power cord is gonna come out for this power strip. Now we'll have a power supply for our battery chargers that we're gonna be putting right there. Now I only put space for two of them because that's all that I have right now. And honestly, even when I do get more, I'm probably never really gonna be charging too many batteries at once. So I'm good with this amount of space. And if it grows too much later, I can always make this bigger. So here's the fun part, filling it up and putting it all, all together. And now the other thing I'm thinking about is maybe putting this strip there to hold it, but I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really seem to me like it's that big of a deal, like those uh, chargers are gonna be moving too much on me. So I just go in ahead and smooth out all these uh, surfaces. Uh, and then later on off camera, after I did this, we did put it on just a wipe on poly uh, surface just to make it a little bit more scratch resistant. And then a little cleanup. And then after that, I can re stock my uh, shelves here. I got a little too anxious and did it the first time before I had finished up uh, with the cleanup there. Another thing I was deciding on is if I'm gonna put a cabinet door on this or not. I initially intended to, but I kinda like the way it looks like this. So I hope you like the project and I will have some detailed plans uh, available in case you're interested in building this yourself. So that's it for today, we'll see you guys next time.